This is a production of Cornell University. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about uh, breeding for weed compatibility in uh, naked organic barley. Uh, so naked, uh, what is naked barley? Um, naked barley is simply uh, barley when harvested, the hull falls off the grain um, in a similar fashion to wheat. Um, we are currently breeding it in the organic context, and so we're trying to develop um, different ways to evaluate it in New York State. Um, three methods that we're doing this is doing acre growouts for marketing, um, diversity panels, and uh, regional yield trials, which I'll go into more detail. Some of the big challenges associated with growing naked organic barley with New York include food and malt um, standards, uh, disease pressure, and a lot of agronomic um, pressures from the New York State environment, and especially ones that are relevant to organic conditions. One important uh, organic condition um, factor is weed competitive ability, or WCA. Uh, wheat competitive ability um, is defined as an ability for a crop to tolerate or outcompete. Um, weed pressure, weed pressure. Um, it's a significant problem in organic systems because um, obviously they don't have uh, as much access to herbicides. And in addition for uh, evaluation and experiments, it's very difficult um, to look at because weeds are, uh, very are very influenced by the environment and crop rotations. So last year we went about trying to develop develop methods to evaluate weed competitive ability by looking at uh, measurements of the weeds, um, by looking at what kind of weeds were in the plots, um, made a visual percentage estimation, did some weed counts, and then did some measurements on barley growth, including stand, um, stand counts, early plant height, uh, visual barley percentage, and uh, categorical vi uh, visual vigor ratings. So last year, um, I presented on this, and overall, we didn't have a high correlation yield. Um, we also had a particularly rough environment for growing barley on the 2018 year. And while we did have some correlation for the barley at uh, May 16th, May 29th, we determined that visual estimates and categorical vigor, uh, vigor ratings are not quantitative enough to measure barley growth. So um, for this, project, we uh, turned to using kind of high throughput aerial imaging techniques to quantify barley growth. So aerial imaging um, from uh, UAVs uh, can measure multispectral bands that are reflected from the barley. Uh, particularly for our interest, we're focused on the near infrared and red wavelengths and finding the differences of those over a ratio that is known as normal differentiation vegetation index. And this can serve as a measurement of vegetative biomass in a plot. Our aim is if we can measure this growth and measure the rate of growth, it can outcompete weeds early in the season before the weeds can become more established and then start competing with the barley. So um, for this experiment on the field design and management, we had two locations, um, Freeville and Caldwell. Uh, Freeville is a was a much more non-stressed ideal environment for growing barley. And the Caldwell location had a lot more stress. Um, there's 20 entities with three replications and a randomized complete block design. And as for management, um, Freeville was planted on April 23rd, Caldwell on April 24th, um, grown under organic conditions. And one special thing that we did have to do is that we did have to get rid of the weeds within the plots um, because if we did not, uh, it would not be possible to differentiate the NDVI between the weeds and the barley. Um, and this field is the Caldwell one. Um, as you can see, there is significant variation within this field, particularly among row. So for the method of aerial image um, collection, flights were conducted uh, using a uh, make a sense red edge camera, using a DJI uh, 100 drone. Um, flights were conducted at 25 meters, which gives a resolution about two centimeters per pixel. Uh, for ground truth NDVI, we used a Tremble Green Seeker, and we used an RTK system for the four ground control points per location. Um, the timeline for the flights, we conducted seven for each um, location. Um, they started at about 30 days after planting and ended about 70. 
Um, images of the calibration uh, reflectance panel were taken before and after each flight, and uh, flights were conducted within three hours of solar. We got about 68 to 75 um, image of uh, five spectral bands uh, per field. Um, it used Agdasoft Pro to stitch the images together. And then to extract mean NDVI values, I used um, image breed uh, developed by Nick Morales on um, part of Breedbase. And here you can see some of the plot polygons that were um, developed um, for the location of Freeville. So um, overall for Freeville, between the correlation of ground truth values to um, aerial imaging values, the correlations were quite high at the beginning and the end, but at the middle, um, they were quite low. Um, two reasons for this could be either um, the, there's some error on my part of measuring the UAV end of VI, um, but in addition, the ground truth on Green Seeker can only measure to two significant figures, so like 0.79 to 0 0.80 and 0.81. So it may have been not able to capture the differences. However, in Caldwell, um, we had much higher correlations. And that might be due to the contrast of the stressful environment um, that provided much more accurate um, correlations. So um, at Freeville, these are distributions of the NDVI values. Um, green um, is uh, the aerial imaging and blue is the ground truth. And uh, early in the season at Freeville, the, the variation um, decreased early, early in days after planting and then um, kind of decreased and then increased again. At Caldwell, however, there is much more uneven variation due to the stress and lack of nutrients um, at Caldwell. So um, I calculated heritabilities um, for each time point um, at Freeville. Um, I used this model. Um, the response is the NDVI value, just an intercept mean and a random effective genotype. Um, overall, heritabilities were high, um, with the exception in this time point. Um, in the middle of planting. And in Caldwell, I, I use this model with the only addition is I used a fixed effector row to account for the, the significant row effects I mentioned earlier. And heritabilities were quite a bit lower. In terms of uh, correlations to other traits, um, yield, there's only about a 0.52 correlation for the later um, days after planting. Heading date, there was a correlation for the early growth, which would make sense if you have higher vegetative growth earlier on in the season, um, my head, heading date will be higher. Um, surprisingly, there is no correlation uh, for height that could be captured by the aerial, um, aerial imaging. And there were some correlation to the diseases of spot blotch. For Caldwell, um, there was a significant um, correlation for yield. Um, heading date, there was not, not much. Um, in this system, uh, the correlations were able to capture height differences, and there was some correlation to spot blotch. Um, in the future, I hope to uh, model this a little bit more dynamically and utilizing kind of growth per curve functions per line across environments. Um, I hope to work on models addressing sp the spatial variability in the field. Um, hope to develop prediction models for some of these traits, and then hopefully use these models for, sec uh, for potential selection. And I would like to thank uh, everyone um, to help me out with this, uh, committee members, Mark, Gary, and Sam, um, everyone in the lab group. Special thanks to everyone with helping me with aerial imaging, um, with learning how to do that, including Margaret, um, Nick, all three Nicks. <laughs> 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 and of course, um, Yannick Lab Group and Synapsis. And I'll take any questions. Thank you, Carl. So, if, if part of what you're getting after is, is uh, you know, competitiveness with weeds, yeah. why did you choose NDVI versus looking at like plant height or, or canopy coverage as your opinion? So, um, Hmm. NDVI seemed like it would be the best way to kind of capture the canopy coverage, but um, I realized there might be models that might be better for that. But um, height, height is something we thought we could put in the model, but 
height doesn't like measured last year didn't seem to capture that as much. So we're hoping that like um, NDVI would capture more of like a wide leaf angle, so to speak, of the barley's to capture that. So. Yes. Do you think that there, there's a uniform distribution of, of different types of leaves across the plots? Because if there are some differences, some may have deeper roots and compete differently with the there, there can be, but it's very still, even then, it's still very difficult to measure because um, there might be weed distributions, but yeah, they're not, they're much more located with respect to the field. Like last year, you'll have a certain corner of the field that has a certain kind of weed, and then another will have another, but it's just very difficult to control for what kind of weeds um, pop up in the certain areas. Carl, do you have notes on, so there's two main growth habits for barley, prostrate and erect. So there's some that lie really flat on the ground for a long time and then tiller, mm -hmm. and others that are upright the whole way. Do you have notes on that for those big barleys? Yes, and all, what, um, Dan asked if I have uh, notes on prostrate versus erect. Um, yes, and currently there's only really one line that is, that is like, is not erect, it's prostrate. Um, so yeah, I do. And I didn't find a significant difference with those either. I do love to add the rate of growth early on. So a lot of out-competing leads and competitive ability has been linked to rapid growth mm -hmm. from germination. Is that a trait you could be looking at? Sure. Um, yeah, hopefully next year, um, we. I hope to aim to do this as soon as it's planted and look at even earlier stages. But um, uh, in developing this protocol is a learning process to um, do imaging. When should we start? When should we finish? Yep. Yes. Thanks, Tom, Carl. Okay. Um, what was, I, maybe I missed this, what was the nature of the stress between the two locations? And was it intentional? It was not intentional. Um, that's what came out of the field. <laughs> um, that's, but it, it isn't, it's not intentional in, in that, but th these are how organic fields can be. But um, probably the most the most probable cause for the stress is probably nutrient availability. I mean, these were planted at the same time. Um, so it was, yeah, it was probably nutrient availability at the culpable location. So did you look at soil type or anything like that? Or? Uh, I haven't gotten into that yet, but I would like to. All right, if there are no more questions or from Zoom, uh, please join me one more time in thanking Carl. This has been a production of Cornell University on the web at cornell.edu.